Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So to, right now we're going to do an application, an example, of using a Brzezowski derivative. So we last time we talked about these derivative things with respect to regexes, and I'll get you through an example. Uh, actually, several examples. So let's do a very simple example. So let's just say that we have A, uh, so this is our input string, and um, in our regex that we have here is A union B, and, and that's it. No stars, no concatenations, nothing. So what we want to do is we want to determine, so what we want to determine if A is in the language of A union B. So it, uh, we can see that it obviously is because A is right here and uh, there's nothing else going on here. So the answer is going to be yes, but we want to actually verify that this is the case. So what do we actually do here? Well, what we want to do is we want to make a Brzezowski de uh, derivative of this thing, of this regex right here with respect to A. So what we want to do is we want to determine if A is in, um, I'm going to abuse notation again. So I'm not going to put L here just to make things easy. So this means the language of this regex. So this is equivalent to saying um, if we multiply by A inverse on both sides, which is the same thing as taking the derivative, is it means the same thing then I'm going to multiply by A inverse on both sides, uh, on the left side. So it has to be the left side, or, or it has to be the same on both sides. So here, well, A, the derivative of the single character A is just the empty string. So therefore, we have the empty string. Oops, I need to draw the empty string, right? And we want to determine if this is in the inverse of A union B. Okay, so that's what we want to determine. Well, let's see, so we want to take the derivative of a union. So recall that the union is kind of like a plus in uh, calculus, where if we want to take the derivative of something that's something pl a plus something else, you take the derivative of the first plus the derivative of the second. So what this is saying is that we want, so we still have empty string over here, whether that's in, and then now we take the derivative of the first one, union the derivative of the second one. So take the derivative of the first side, union the derivative of the second side. And what we can see is that this, we just determine right here is the empty string. So that's the empty string. And a and B in this case are different, so taking the derivative with respect to B is going to give us the empty set. So that gives us the empty set. And now this tells us that if we take the empty string union the empty set, well, empty set union anything is just the anything. So can epsilon be generated by epsilon? And of course it can, because... <laughs> They're the same. They're the same thing. So therefore, we have determined formally that A can be generated by A union B. Okay. So that's a pretty simple example. Let's do a slightly more complicated example. So let's again. I'm gonna make this totally up. I'm not. I don't have this written down. I'm making these up as I go. So let's just say we have a more complicated string. Let's say A B A. And our regex is going to be, um, oh, I don't know, uh, A, A union B, A, A star. Okay. So we have unions happening. We have concatenations happening. We have uh, uh, stars happening. We got all of them happening. So, so yeah, so what we want to determine just like before, is whether ABA can be generated by uh, this regex that we have. Let's make sure everything fits. Yep. 
Uh, I'm a little zoomed in, so I'm not sure if everything appears on screen until I look up. Okay, so now if we want to determine if this string is in here, what we need to do is take the derivative. And we take the derivative one character at a time. So uh, just like we did before, we're multiplying by a in the character inverse on the left side. So I want to make this a disappear because I want to get down to the empty string. So what we need to do is to multiply by a inverse on both sides. B A A star. So then A inverse A, those will cancel out. So that gives us B A on the left side. And on the right side, these two uh, cancel out. So this will give us uh, nothing on the front. So what we have here is whether this is in A union B A A star. And I'm telling you right now, the answer is going to be no. So um, be, because we can clearly see that BAA is too long to generate just BA only, and there's no B otherwise. But let's try to de uh, determine it formally. Okay. So now, again, we want to make this B disappear. So what we need to do here is to multiply by B inverse on both sides. So B inverse of the thing on the right side. And uh, the, the left side, the B inverse and the B cancel. So I, again, I have B inverse of this big expression on the right side. And then now we need to, uh, we, we can't, um, uh, we can't like um, trod like we've been doing before just by uh, using like a inverse a we actually need to uh, work with the star right here we, we actually actually need to work with the star in order for this to work so how does star work well what we determined before was if we have the inverse of the star of something we need to take we will look at the inverse of the regex without the star and then the regex with the star so I'm going to move this over here so this is going to be equivalent to saying that a is in b inverse of the single of the regex itself um, and nothing else. And then after that is going to be uh, the regex whole thing star. Okay, so, so we can really forget about this part, uh, at least for now. So then we need to expand uh, this part right here. So Remember, just like we did before, the inverse of a union is going to be the, or at least the derivative of the union, is going to be the derivative of the first piece. Um, union, the derivative of the second piece. So this is saying A is in the, the inverse with respect to A, or, or with respect to B of A, union, um, B inverse A A. And then we have a union, oh, oh no, no, sorry. This should be uh, BAA, okay? So then we have uh, this thing on the right side, still there, so that hasn't changed. So then now we will do, we can simplify this. I'm just gonna do it in one step right here. So B inverse uh, B will simplify to just AA, and we know that B inverse A is going to result in the empty set. So this will give us the empty set because they're different characters. So we have empty set union AA and then this thing right here. So then uh, now what we have is um, whether this is um, in, whether A is in, um, uh, yeah. So this is, the empty set union AA is going to simplify to AA. And uh, yeah, so then we have the whole regex over here. I was stuttering there because I thought I did something wrong. It turns out that I needed, a, we need a few more steps in order for this to be proven. Okay, so now we're down to here. So this simplified to just AA. 
So then now we're going to multiply by the inverse again on the left side. I know there's a lot of A's here, but so then these are going to cancel. So then uh, epsilon, whether this is in, these two are going to cancel. So I'm going to get A, uh, A union, B, A, A star. Okay. So the, so that we can actually verify that this is not in this regex right here because um, this thing is not starred, is not involved in the star, and there's no epsilons over here. There is a more formal way that you can actually prove this, which is using a function that you can define to be epsilon um, if the regex contains epsilon and um, empty set otherwise. So uh, I won't actually get into that. Put into the comments if you can find a way of verifying formally that epsilon is not in this, but we can clearly see that it isn't. Yeah, I don't like saying that it's clearly even though we just did this formally, but um, yeah, so you would have to define that particular function in order for this to be formally proven. Um, you can actually sh look at this and say, well, um, this is a concatenation of two things. So this is a concatenation of, of uh, let, let's actually make it look like this. So it's of these two things. So this epsilon can only be generated if both pieces can generate uh, epsilon. That's the only possible way. Well, the second piece certainly can uh, because of the star right here. And you can actually do an inductive proof of that. But we can see that, but it doesn't even matter what the second piece does, because the first piece is a single character, and single characters can't generate the empty string. And so that would prove it. Cool. So uh, wh what we were able to show is that uh, using Brzezowski derivatives, or however you pronounce his name, I don't know, uh, however you pronounce his name, we were able to show how to figure out whether a string can be generated by a regular expression without having to convert the regular expression into an automaton first. So, and I think that's pretty cool. So if you have any other interesting thoughts or comments, please put them below. There are plenty of links in the video description for you to support the channel if you want to do so. Please like and subscribe to the channel, it really helps us out. And as always, I'll see you next time.